Hi, so my name is Aran Sari, and I'm part of the I'm a software engineer at the browser automation team in Google. If you've been to my workshop on Monday and wondered what the browser automation team does, that's one of the things. I spend most of my time working on a Selenium web driver, but some part of it on setting up infrastructure and tools and making it easy for other developers inside Google to use uh, web driver and Selenium. And what I'm going to talk about today is how Google got to using virtual machines for running uh, web tests, web, uh, web tests. And in order to provide some motivation, I'll tell you um, a story. I was in QCon London several weeks ago, and I was talking to one of the speakers, asking them about their Selenium tests, and one of the other attendants, a developer, overheard a conversation, and he chimed in and said, oh, Selenium tests? Man, that's difficult, that's, that's hard to set up, that's cumbersome, that's, that's not easy to use. So I turned in the guy and say, what exactly is the problem? Let me know. I can fix it. He was um, confused for a few seconds. But then he said, you know what? Actually, the problem is that setting up the test environment that our test engineers created, which includes um, installing the uh, Selenium server and all the other tools, is very, very painful. And this is the, the most difficult part. Once it's done, it's actually quite easy to use. And this is a very good point, because the API is nice and clean, and it's relatively easy to use. But once you're in a big environment, in a corporate environment, you have to have an easy way to set it up. Otherwise, it means that developers will spend the time on it, a lot of time on it, will be frustrated, and will use it less. So a bit about the history and the background of how we run web driver tests and Selenium tests in Google. So this is the basic setup. You have the developer working in his developer environment with the test and the code, and he wants to use um, to run the test against the browser. So in local machine, that's really not a problem. You have used Selenium. Selenium will start up the browser for you. Uh, those of you who have uh, used the Firefox driver know that all they have to do is new Firefox driver. Firefox will find the Firefox driver will find the Firefox installation for you and we'll just start it up. And it all works quite well when you test locally on, on a developer machine. But obviously that's not enough because you want to test against multiple browsers. And the question is, how can you get this combination of, of browsers? How do you get the tests to run against them? And you cannot have, so you can have all of these browsers running on a Windows machine and you can test against it. But what happens if your developer is working on Linux? And he, wants, uh, and he still wants to test against IE. So this is where the, um, this, so one solution is just to have multiple machines, have the Selenium server running on each machine, have the tests point to, the, to a different server every time. But obviously, that's something that's very difficult to, to manage. If these machines are dedicated and each developer has its own set of machines, yes, that's easy. But obviously, it's a waste of resources. And you cannot really share these machines. So there, there is the, um, the grid approach, which is in Google called the Selenium farm. Have, uh, have these machines, have a farm front, front end or a head node that you'll point, point your test to that head, to that head node, and th th that head node will um, then direct the tests to the next available machine according to the browser requirements. So the test can specify which browser it wants, i.e. Firefox, and the front end will direct the tests to that, basically to that machine. You, I guess a lot of you know this approach, and you can already guess that it's a bit difficult to maintain. First of all, you cannot really scale it. You have, you have to have a fixed number of physical machines, and they will just sit there and consume power, produce heat, if uh, nobody's using them. And when there are a lot of tests that want to run against them, in some companies before release, then you're going to have a very big queue forming at the front end, waiting for uh, specific browser or machine configurations. There are other reasons why it's difficult. I'll go into them a bit later. There was something a bit different that we also tried. And the idea here was take the tests, pack them together with um, Selenium and the browser, ship them to a build machine or on the, on the farm of machines that doing the, all of the building and testing, and let it run over there. It's possible to do it with Firefox on Linux because you can pack it relatively easily and ship it. I'm saying relatively. I'm, I'll show later why it's not that easy. 
but obviously it forces you to use Linux machines for your build, in, for your build infrastructure. You can mix Windows and Linux machines, but it's difficult, it's cumbersome. And, well, it's, it won't work easy, it won't work easily. What we also do here is shard the tests, just split them so we can run this one test suite, different tests from one test suite in parallel and get results fast. This is very good when we have a lot of uh, Linux machines available and we want the test to run as quickly as possible. Can you spot what's wrong in this window? Like in this screenshot? Let me zoom in. Can you see the button, buttons on the left side? How can that happen? Turns out that when you ship Firefox to a remote Linux machine that you don't know a lot about, you don't you ship not only you ship not only Firefox, you have to ship a bunch of X libraries so Firefox will be able to load. And you have to ship a headless X server so Firefox will have some place to display itself. I saw one of the tweets uh, the other day asking about headless, wondering if headless browsers means running on XVFB. So the headless browser that were mentioned, HTML unit and such, they don't need a display. But when you run Firefox, you do need a display and you will need XVFB. So you have to ship quite a lot of binaries onto the remote machine, unpack them all, set them all up, and then you have to fix the library path because Firefox expects a bunch of libraries and some of them are in hard-coded locations. So you have to either do a lot of um, mucking around with the path to make sure that everything is in the right place or just patch the binary to match the paths that you have. And you will still run across into such cases where the library for loading and parsing the PNG files that represent the buttons, that display the buttons, is not there. And this is something nobody really complained about, right, because the tests were running. But once in a while, you would get this odd screenshot. And at least for me, I got a feeling that even if nobody complains and the, there is no visible uh, failure that, that is caused by this, it, it, can be, it, it can be right. It has to be fixed. Something weird may happen, and maybe some of the tests will fail because they're trying to uh, render the same kind of image. So I spent some time trying to fix this specific issue, a lot of mucking around, a lot of debugging, figuring out where all of the, what are all of the libraries that are required and shipping them and uh, patching the binary. But it's, it's very, very hard. You spend a lot of time on it. And so this is basically, so what are the problems we had I with the approaches that I've mentioned so far? First, if you maintain a grid, you, ha you have to maintain a set of uh, physical machines. These machines have to be upgraded whenever a new OS patch comes out. They maintain a state, and this is a very, very difficult problem because the tests run against different sites, but the cookies remain. With Firefox, you can create new profiles, but with IE, you have to explicitly clean up the cache, clean up the cookies. You can imagine that in Google, where a lot of new products are being tested, one of the products may set a cookie for an experimental feature, and another test that will run will pick up this cookie, and suddenly this feature will be turned on on the other product, but, it, but, it's, but the test doesn't expect it at all, and things can break. We have a lot of cleanup scripts. We had a lot of cleanup scripts to try to reset the machine to a pristine state, and it's very, very difficult to get right. Not to mention that these are physical machines, and they sometimes uh, get stuck, and somebody has to reboot them, and after a power failure, you have to replace some of them because the power supply is fried, and they are not working anymore. And basically spend a lot of time just maintaining this farm. And you can scale it. Sometimes there will be large queues. Sometimes they will sit idle, as, I'm, as I mentioned. There is another issue of multiple tests running in parallel on the same machine. You can have several Firefox instances. You could have, until not long ago, only one IE instance on the machine. But when they all run together, due to the way that WebDriver is implemented, um, sending clicks as if a user was sending them, try to imagine 10 windows running on your machine and you trying to click the right one, it can lead to un unexpected results. And it's very hard to, rep to reproduce these test failures because developers don't have a way to connect to these machines and see what's going on. 
Okay, so how about the approach of distributing the test in the browser? As I said, it's, it's very difficult uh, to get it right. You can spend a lot of time on it, and it, and it, it will still limit your choice of uh, platform and browser. So what did we achieve in Google using virtual machines? We have about one million uh, web tests running a day. This is Selenium 1 and 2, and a bunch of other uh, web, web browser automation frameworks. Not a lot, but there are some. About 1,000 um, browser sessions at the same time. This is the same environment every time for every test, and it's accessible both for developers and automated build tools. Now, this, is a, this is a very important point. You want your developers to be able to run the tests and see what's going on, and you want the same tests in the same environment running, using, running for an automated build tools. And how, we, how do we maintain it? We have a set of VM images that, we con that contain the required browser that we have, and it picks up new versions of Selenium when they are updated. So the way it works at in Google is that we check in sort of pre-compiled versions, jar files of, um, of Selenium, and these are the ones being used by all the tests. And when we update it, the virtual machine, at least there is, there is a script running on the VM that will just pull the new version when it's, uh, when it's starting. But we didn't get to this on the first, on the first attempt. This, was, this actually is from the second attempt. The first attempt was a very naive one. There was a project in Google providing uh, virtual machines, sort of virtual machine manager. And you would go to the um, site or use an API of this uh, project and say, I want a Windows XP machine that supports English and Spanish with IE8. Give it to me. And you will wait several minutes. You will get a VM. It was oriented towards manual testing, so manual testers don't mind waiting five minutes until they get the VM configuration that would have taken them days to set up themselves. But for automated tests, five minutes is a lot of time, especially when your large tests are limited uh, for 15 minutes. It means you will, you will be waiting about a third of your test for the VM to, to boot up. And even after the VM would boot up, the Selenium, at least the Selenium infrastructure would have to install the web level server, or the Selenium server on that machine, start it, make sure it's ready, and only then hand back control to the test so, so that the, the test can start running against it. This would also consume a lot of time because the, the, web level, the Selenium jar would have to be uploaded to the machine, it would take some more seconds, sometimes up to a minute, and you would spend a lot of time and the test will time out in a halfway because it took so long to set up these VMs. But developers were still saying, you know what, I don't mind. I'll wait, I'm, I'm willing to wait. I'll extend the time out for, for the tests. I'll, I'll wait for longer for uh, results, but I need to be able to test against IE. But even with this willingness to wait, it was still difficult because this was running on a separate infrastructure, running on a sort of dedicated set of machines to provide the VMs, which means that there are a long queues. Sometimes tests would wait for hours to get a VM and would just give up. And this was not, it was obvious that this is a very, very promising approach because people wanted it. People sort of, it's, it's fell a victim to its own success. A lot of people used it, so the queues were long, but obviously there was demand. So what was the second attempt? The second attempt is to have the, in a similar way um, to shipping the test and the browser, we will ship a test and a virtual machine, the virtual machine image. And there will be a monitor process to um, communicate with the virtual machine, to start it up, to make sure that it's ready. And all the test does is ask the monitor process, what's the, what's the address of the uh, remote server? What, what should I connect to? And once the, test, the, the monitor process would provide this to the test, the test can communicate directly with the Selenium server and just run all the tests. So we would ship all of that. The VM would start, and the test will start uh, communicating with the Selenium server and, have the, and start running against the browser of its choice. And then you can scale it up. You can have multiple shards, each shard containing uh, the same VM or different VMs running on an existing infrastructure. We are using a QEMU, which is an open source 
emulation project to run the VMs. And if you have Linux machines with kernel acceleration, then these machines, then it works quite quickly. And you can basically get IE tests running on Linux build nodes, which is what something we, um, we have a lot of in Google. Now, if you would have told me a year and a half ago that you can do this, you can run, you can take a VM, deploy it to a Linux, Linux machine, start it up, and have a test running in a reasonable time, I would be very skeptic. I wouldn't believe you. Part of it is because of my experience with the first attempt to run it on standard VMs, which took a long time. Turns out it's doable. Let's see what, what are the, um, some of the obstacles or pitfalls. So one of the things I would have told you if you would have told me that it's possible is that, first of all, VMs are sluggish. It's going to take a long time to boot up the VM, and once it boots, even once it boots, you're going to spend a lot of time just waiting for things to happen because the VM is slow. Turns out that Windows XP VMs can boot quite quickly, so, the, so do Linux VMs. One thing you can do to improve the time until the machine is available, so basically what you're waiting is for the Selenium server to be up and running on the machine. You don't have to boot the machine every time. You can just suspend, suspend the VM image once it's set up and resume it for your tests. Saves a significant amount of time. You can have the Selenium server already installed on the machine, and it's available. The way that, that it's implemented, again, in Google, is that the Selenium server exists on the VM image, but there is a small script that will go and check to see if there is a newer version of the Selenium server. If there is, it will download it. If not, it's using the... It's using the server that's on the VM image. The VMs are updated once every quarter. If the, and it's, it usually happens that the Selenium server is updated more often. So about half of the time, I would say, the, um, the, VM, the Selenium server on the VM is being used. The thing is, it's, it's not, it's never, I don't think it's ever going to be fast enough for unit tests. So if you're, if you want to do unit tests, especially for a JavaScript code, you would need another JavaScript test executor to run these tests, maybe using a VM that it was pre-allocated. And the other thing is that you wouldn't want to create this VM for every new test, for every test method in every test case. You would want to share the WebDriver instance between the tests inside, at least inside the test suite. And the way to do it is, if you're using Java, you can use uh, Google Juice, which is a dependency injection framework, and it will just provide the same driver instance or any other dependency injection framework in your favorite language. And this, there is a sort of fine balance between, the, between sharing the same instance and enjoying um, low overhead per test method and getting a clean state and a clean browser for every test. So it may be important for some specific tests, and you can specify for this test, I want this test to get a new browser instance, but the rest of the tests, it's fine, they can share the same, can share the same browser. I would have also told you that the VM images are going to be huge, and it's going to take a long time to move them back and forth between the um, build nodes. And the thing is, it's not, so it's not entirely accurate. Why? First of all, you can trim the VM images manually throw away what you don't need from the operating systems, and it can be as small as several hundreds of megabytes. You're going to have bigger benefit if you cache these images on your um, build machine or test machines. So these images are there, ready, suspended, and it doesn't take, and once the test requests for them, it takes several, only several seconds or tens of seconds to actually boot up these uh, images and get into a running state. So. It is reasonable, and with caching, you can, you can have VM images at reasonable size. It gets more difficult for Windows um, 7, because the images are, they tend to get bigger, and we, we are working on a solution for that. And obviously, you're still going to have to maintain the images. It's not as painful as updating 20 machines on a Selenium farm, manually installing the same patch for every machine. But you still need to update the browsers. You still need to update the OS. And the thing is that if you invest a bit more and have sort of an automation framework that will allow you to control the machine in, on the VM, 
you can do all of some of these updates automatically. Like updating a version of Firefox on the machine or Opera is very, very easy. This is something we are still working on in Google. It's not entirely automated, which is why we update, it. We, we update the VM images once a quarter. But it is, but it is definitely doable, because that is how we automate the rest of the, of the execution of setup on the, um, on the machine. So how many of you use the Internet Explorer driver? Not a lot. And how many of you had to go back after the first attempt and figure out why it wouldn't work? OK, about the same number of times. So the IE driver is a very good example, at least the old one, the, one that, the new one that Jim Evans um, submitted not long ago improves, th improves things significantly. But with IE, when you first start IE on a new machine, and probably most of you don't remember that because it's long ago, IE will pop up and say, do you want me to do auto-completion for you? And on the first time that you move from a secure site to an unsecure site, it's going to warn you and say, you are moving from a secure site to a non-secure site. Do you want to get this warning again? And the whole bunch of warnings that IE will throw at you on the first um, couple of uses. And there are also setup issues. So the sites that you're going to test against have to be in the same security domain as have to be in the trusted security domains. Now it's, it's a bit different with the new IE driver. But you would still have to do a lot of setup uh, steps on, an, on, a, on a Windows machine. And it is painful. And with v VM images, sorry, and with VM images, you can do that only once and enjoy the, um, sort of enjoy the benefits of your developer not having to care for it. Other concerns, and I would, this is basically the, the first one, taking care of developers is very important. You want your developers to be able to run these tests as easily as possible and not, not have to go to anybody else other than maybe some documentation to be able to create and run a new Selenium test. And you also want them to be able to debug the tests that fail remotely on their own machine. And this is part of a bigger concept of the test of the developers owning the of being responsible for the quality of the of the code by writing and maintaining their own tests. They may need help with test infrastructure, but ultimately they should be able to use it themselves. And this is why we spend a lot of time in Google making sure that this is as easy as possible. All the time spent for uh, patching Firefox so it can run nicely on remote machines and setting up all these VMs is is to make sure that the test that for developer. It's no more than a couple of lines of code to get an instance on whichever web driver he wants, i.e. Firefox, Chrome, whatever you can think of. There is the issue of uh, security, which is actually improved inside the VM because you, the host can control network access for these machines. And there is the problem of OS X, which cannot be virtualized on non-Apple hardware, not because of software or technical limitations. And for this issue, we still, have to, we still have to fall back on a grid configuration. We do this for OS X, for Safari, and for iPhone, for the iPhone driver, which, again, requires OS X to run on it. OK, so my point in this talk was not to convince you that testing on VMs is really cool and nice because it's, it's expensive. I want you to think about the requirements of your tests, your testing environment, and the cost, and the other alternatives. So if you're testing the same, the same web application, on, always on the same set of machines or browsers, you may be able to set up, uh, set up, to set up cleanup scripts that will make life easy for you to use a farm configuration. Also requires that your, it also allows you to test applications internally without exposing them to the outside world. But if you don't care about that, then you can use a cloud service, either a cloud service for VMs or a cloud service for Selenium testing, one, like something like SourceLab uh, does. And then you have to think about the cost of, of, main, of maintaining the VMs. And if you are testing a lot of different applications and you do need the scale of, you need, need to be able to scale between many machines and very few machines with not, not a lot of tests are running, then maybe these, the solution of using virtual machines is, is um, viable for you. 
So my point is, think about the needs of your tests. You can see that it is doable on virtual machines, and we solved many, at least many of the problems or issues that you can think of. But it is expensive and may suit you, may not. Just consider that. Thank you. The question was about, as was about speed of the, the speed of running the test, if it's significantly slower when running inside the VM. I would say that if you run it na like natively on Linux using Firefox, it's going to be faster than running in a VM. But once you run a VM, I don't think the difference between running inside the VM for IE, for, um, for IE and running on a farm is significantly different because the farm has another uh, different overhead of, um, of um, front end that has to pass on these uh, the comments like delegate them to, to a farm machine. So it's the performance difference is not that significant. Yes. Uh, so there's, uh, I think there is one, internal, the, one internally developed and it's using, we try to migrate all of the tests from old frameworks to, to uh, Selenium and the tests that still use the old frameworks are using uh, basically sharing the same JavaScript code for automating the browser that Selenium does. This is the browser automation atoms, which I'm certain Simon will mention later today. But the goal is to provide a provide different API if, the, if certain teams prefer different API, but the underlying mechanism or under, underlying code to drive the browser is shared among, across all different testing um, autom like automation frameworks. So state is the cache, is the cookies that are left especially for IE between, between different tests and that, that, may, that may affect different tests, different tests running on the same machine at different times. And if tests are running on the same machine at the same time, there may be some, 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 so some events, especially when you run at least 10 or 20 Firefox instances on the same machine, you will see that sometimes a click gets lost or something like this because the way that um, the clicking mechanism is implemented. It's something that's very difficult, very difficult to solve. And it will happen on a desktop, on any desktop application that you run 20 instances of on, on one machine. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm not sure there is, there is a VM image for Windows 7 at the moment, well, it's, but. but the yes, yes, there is, there is no limitation. The test specifies, as part of the, um, test description, you say what, what, what are the dependencies of the test, what is the main class of the test, and what browsers and OS combinations you want to run on. And we'll just, the test infrastructure will make sure to run, will run your test again and again against different combi combination every time. Yeah, so there is a whole, whole infrastructure for um, storing and reporting test results. I can maybe explain a bit about it later in person because it's a topic for a whole talk. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's million sort of million browser locations. Obviously, more tests run because tests share the, some tests in the same test suite share the same browser instance. So my question is, how many of your tests share your your test It's it's a very it's a very good question about test brittleness. How many of the tests uh, fall victim to that? And this is something we constantly improve, at, or at least give an indication that when a test is failing because of an infrastructure issue, the issue is not related to the test. It's, uh, I, I cannot provide percentage because, again, it's very hard to, to write good web tests. Well, definitely yes, because if tests are written properly, then the only failures they'll have is from infrastructure issues, and that's, that's constantly being reduced because we're constantly improving that. Yes. I believe that because we wanted a reproducible, simple environment, we're just have, we have a VM with the browser, it's sort of nothing else, but I'll be happy to hear about it later. 